in or out on a couple of these SEC teams. We were talking before we got off the air. A better uh, probably qualifier for the in or out uh, when it comes to these teams, like the over-under win total. So essentially, are we buying or selling these teams? Auburn, their over-under win total is at 7.5. I'm pretty high on the Tigers, but I want to know what you think about them, Mike. <laughs> well, in case you are unaware, I'm like public enemy number one on the planes right now just because uh, I'm not a huge Hugh Freeze guy. I never have been. But, uh, you know, th that's a tough one. That, that's that's near a push for me, but if I, I, I assume I have to pick one. So I'm going to go under just because – and I've – Again, I've made this well aware down there at Alabama Jocks Radio. They've had me on there. And I basically just said, I don't believe in the way that Hugh Freeze is building his program. And, and, and they're over the moon. They can't understand what in the world is this guy talking about. We're top 10 in recruiting. Well, that's fantastic because the teams you're chasing are top five. And if you struggle again this year like you did last year, all these guys that you're signing, guess who's going to be calling them? Kirby Smart's going to be calling them. Kalen DeBoer's going to be calling them. Josh Heupel's going to be calling them. And I, I don't think you're going to hold on to all these guys. So if you hit the over, if you continue to recruit, I get it. You, we'll build something special. But that was the model four or five years ago, J.D. I, I think you have to go portal. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just dumbfounded that they didn't add a quarterback via the transfer portal. And, again, it, I, I feel like the, the hopes and dreams of Hugh Freeze's program is, is on Peyton's Thorne's shoulders and, and that's not a good place to be in my opinion and I totally understand that too because I think for me until we went out and you know got to see Auburn in person during spring practice and kind of get to talk to some people over there like I, I'm also very much so like I need to see it to believe it from Peyton Thorne the reason why I lean over on on this is because I think Hugh Freeze calling the offense here and there's a lot of ifs and buts and variables here so Tiger fans buckle up if the weapons translate that are supposed to translate. Keandre Lambert-Smith from Penn State, Cam Coleman, super freak, true freshman, and Peyton Thorne just takes a positive year two jump. And it would have to be a jump now. It would have to be some solid production, have to throw for more than 100 yards in the big games. Like Those, those are all obvious. Um, if they can help him enough, I think that the talent level on this roster is good enough to beat some of the teams they'll have to beat to get the over. So we're splitting right away, Mike. We're, we're, you're, you're going under on the Tigers. I'm going over. Uh, the good news, though, on that is one of us will walk away from this thing right. So that's good news. That's the good news. One of us will be able to be uh, on the right side of things. How about Florida? Florida, they're over under, Mike. Four and a half. Four and a half <laughs> preseason. Not even saying that they're not, not even five wins for the, for, the, for the Gators out there in Gainesville. Uh, your overall thoughts on Billy Napier entering into year three and uh, his chances of hitting that over there? Yeah, I, lo I love Florida this year. And now, again, they're not going to win the SEC. They're probably not going to make the playoff. I'm not saying that. But, I mean, I, th I think they could legitimately double that that over-under. I mean, it, I think seven is more realistic, seven and five. But eight and four, I think, is on the table. I think what everybody does with Florida is they look at the schedule. And, yes, it is daunting. But they just write them off because of it. And, and really where it's most daunting is the final seven games. And we do this every year, J.D. We get suckered in by, oh, oh man, they got to play – Ole Miss and Texas and, and, and LSU and Florida State and mm. on and on and on. Well, yeah, those teams were great last year. There, there's no guarantees that they're going to be great this year either. So we could get to the season. We could get to those games. And all of a sudden, those games are not as formidable. But why I really like Florida is the first five, six games, I think they can win all of them. Mm. And if you do that, you're, you've already hit that over. They own Tennessee. I don't care where that game's played. I'm a Tennessee grad, and I'm sitting here telling you they could play that thing in Neyland Stadium 100 times in a row. Florida's probably going to win about 97 of them. So that that game, you know, again, I, I even tend to favor Florida in that, as crazy as that is. But Miami, A&M, year one coaching staff, Central Florida, get, get the heck out of here with that. I mean, they're going to kill Central Florida. So, yeah, I, I love Florida and the over. That that's This is probably the one I'm most confident about. I was about to ask you that. So of all the win totals in the SEC, and we're not going to go through every single win total, this is the one where you're like, hey, let's get out that piggy bank, let's go get the kids' college fund, and let's put it on Gators over four and a half? I think so, because it's so low. Now, the one other one I love is Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, they're over under. It, it opened, I think, at nine and a half. I think it's down to nine. But I love Missouri, too. But that's a little bit of a, of a, of a higher bar, obviously. And, you know, there's no way we could project injuries, of course. But – you know, a key player here or there goes down from Missouri. Maybe you don't hit that. 
Whereas Florida at, at, at four, that, that's ridiculous. I mean, I mean there, we are getting to a bowl game in Gainesville. And I think Billy Napier, even though he may be on the hottest seat in the country right now, he's back for another year. No, I'm with you, Mike. I, I'm 100% with you. Like right here, we're in lockstep. Like I, I'm going to wherever I can cash this in at and I'm giving them a, hey, Gator Chomp, let's get it done. Let's put everything we can on the Gators over four and a half. And a big thing too, which Mike, I don't, I don't know if you're feeling this way as well. Graham Mertz, had his name dragged through the mud last year. Like, everybody was dunking on him after the spring game and saying he wasn't any good and all the picks he threw at Wisconsin. And I'm like, okay, well, we did all that talking that was negative about him. And then he went out and threw 20 touchdowns, three picks, almost 3,000 yards. And then he gets more weapons this year. You get a better defense. Like, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I'm not saying they're winning 10 ball games and get the tickets to Atlanta and think about a college football playoff berth. But four and a half? Mike, four and a half, four and a half feels... Foolish to me. We're in lockstep here, brother. We're in lockstep. Uh, Ole Miss. I think it's probably fair for us here to maybe... Because I, I don't know that the, the win total is so intriguing to me as their postseason aspirations. I think it's college football playoff or bust for them. In fact, I think they maybe need to win a game in the college football playoff to satisfy the folks in Oxford. Where are you if I were to say Ole Miss makes the college football playoff and then wins a game in the CFP? Are you buying that, in on that, and out on that? I mean, I'll go a step further, J.D. I think Ole Miss can win the national championship. I, I legitimately do. Now, I'm not sitting here saying they're the favorites to do it, but outside of Georgia, maybe Ohio State, I would probably put Ole Miss right there, number three, with anybody in the country. I, I really do believe that. And I, I love the philosophy. Again, this, this is why I kind of bash Hugh Freeze for his model. I, I love what Lane Kiffin's doing. And it's not just adding via the portal. It's, it's getting guys to, to buy in. They're, they're all bought in there. Last dance. We're all coming back. Some Several of these players could be in the NFL right now, but they obviously added people via the transfer portal, with arguably the, the top transfer portal class in the country. And it's not just positions that they were lacking. They're, they're adding talent, J.D., at positions where – I'm, I'm sitting here saying, what well, you, you got great receivers. Why are you adding Juice Wells? Well, because Juice Wells this time last year, I thought was the best receiver in the SEC. I mean, they're adding strength on strength, and, and I love that philosophy because if someone's afraid of it, well, there's the door because Lane Kiffin will just replace you with another transfer. And is, is that sustainable? I don't know. But uh, I, this is the method because they, they don't recruit as well as Georgia. They don't recruit as out well as Alabama. But where they can make up is this – insane system we have right now and exploit it for for all you can and credit the fans and the boosters down there for giving Lane Kiffin the ammunition and, and really even Lane Kiffin for flirting with the Auburn job to, to get them to, to pony up so to speak I mean it's it's a it's a it's a storm of of good things I think for Ole Miss and that's why I think they they legitimately can win the national championship this year Hey, Ole Miss fans, if you're watching right now, go follow SEC Mike on Twitter and, and I mean, boost this clip because, I mean, that is, I think, the rallying cry. They're probably all in on is like, hey, this is the year. Lane Kiffin, I don't know if he plays poker, but he took all the chips and said, hey, we're in. All right, let's ride. Let's get after this here. This is our window. We got Jackson Darty back. We got Trey Harris, Juice Wells, you just mentioned, the guys that got on defense. Like, I am really, really intrigued by what they end up being. I think given that proposition of them winning a game in the college football playoff, Right now, I would say I'm in on that. National championship, the odds in Vegas right now, they're, they have the sixth best odds to win the whole darn thing. So, I mean, it's not its not the wildest take in the world, I think, for the folks that are saying, oh, Mr. The Natty, are you kidding me? I don't think it's that crazy. I'm with SEC Mike on this one. Uh, Mike, the interesting thing to me here, if Ole Miss does do what we say they could do, which is compete for a national title, I think a lot of folks, a lot of coaches probably, would shift their mindset more towards what you're saying of, hey, you have to lean on the portal, not just in a surgical sense, like you got to go in the portal and get some quantity. I wonder how people view the portal with Ole Miss having like big time success in 2024 in this new playoff. I think they could shatter the glass ceiling for a lot of folks in some ways. Yeah, no doubt. But I, I honestly, I think it's more interesting if it blows up and then we're sitting here saying, well, what in the world? We'll, we'll never do that again. Right. So, I, I mean, I've been hearing for years, J.D., that this is you can't do it. You can't you, you have to develop and recruit linemen and, and you have to have them in your system three or four years. Well, Lane Kiffin just turned his back on all that. And, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but since he's been hired in Oxford, Ole Miss has got the third best conference record of any team outside of 
Georgia and Alabama, obviously. So uh, clearly what he's doing is working. And, and I'm just fascinated. I, I mean, I think he's he's a step ahead of the game right now. And even he calls it out for being a, a foolish system and it's broken and all this. But credit him for exploiting it because it's within the rules. Dude, he's such a great soundbite. Anytime I see something of his on social media, throw the AirPods in, turn up the volume. Like this is, <laughs> I don't know what he's going to say, but it's probably going to be hilarious and probably have a kernel of truth baked in there. Because what you just said is so funny. He's like, this system is broken. Uh, let me take advantage of it to the fullest extent. Uh, LSU is fascinating. Their over under win total is at nine and a half. Brian Kelly in year three, historically, has been cooking when he goes into his third year at a school in Cincinnati. He took them to a BCS Bowl. Uh, Notre Dame, they went and competed for a national championship against Alabama. Year three for LSU, are you in or out on that over-under total preseason of nine and a half wins for the Tigers? I think I'm out here, J.D. And now keep in mind, I, I was the fool that said, uh, I don't know how many people said this, but last offseason I had LSU winning it all. Now their offense – I think they lived up to that expectation. The problem was the defense was a complete train wreck, and I, I was anticipating them taking a step forward, which didn't happen. So where do they go now? I, I don't understand the LSU hype other than Brian Kelly. He is a great coach. I love the additions and, and the firings he made, but more important, the additions he made to the defensive coaching staff. But you don't just snap your fingers, and, and of all, all of a sudden we have an outstanding unit. And I keep hearing people say, well, it can't be any worse. Well, they've been saying that down there about the defense in, in Gainesville for about four or five years now. It, it can get worse. Hmm. So uh, particularly if you can't stop people from running the ball, and I, I think that's going to be a huge issue at LSU this year. Uh, Blake Baker, new defensive coordinator, super aggressive guy. It worked at Missouri. It didn't work at Miami. So there's going to be tons of busts. And they, they had far and away the best offense in the country last year. It's not going to be near that with, with what they have to replace. I, I'm not saying they're going to be awful on offense, but I, I, I would say they're probably top six or seven offense in the SEC. But that's that's a huge step back from the best offense in the country. So, yeah, I, I have to sell LSU right now. It's, it's so tricky because I think what you said is on the money. Like, it's this trade-off of, well, if the defense does get better, how much better are they from 105th total defense? And then on the other side of things, offensively, you know, you, you feel good about Garrett Nussmeyer, I think, in Baton Rouge, but you, you do lose three first-round picks. I think the schedule is really interesting when you look at LSU. The game against USC is obviously going to be one you got to have if you're going to get the over on that 9.5 win total. They got Ole Miss. They get Ole Miss and Bama both at home. Going to Gainesville could be tricky, and then they get Oklahoma at home. This is one where if I'm going with my gut – I think LSU is probably a nine and three team. I think that's probably a pretty fair spot to peg them at. But like, if I got a couple dollars left over from throwing a few dollars on, you know, the Ole Miss over on making the college football playoff and uh, the Auburn, I, I might, I might sprinkle a few dollars here on LSU over under, uh, or excuse me, over nine and a half wins uh, in 2024. Man, you 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 love to gamble then, apparently, because I I, I feel it again. Ten and two with with some of the Ole Miss and, and Alabama. I get it. They're both at home. I think I would favor both those teams to beat LSU right now. Mm. So, and, and heck, Brian Kelly's not won an opener since he's got there. Now he sh like you said, he sh he's got to get that one. If not, we've got massive massive problems. I think. Dude, the narrative out of week one between that game and then the Florida and Miami game. I mean, it's going to be overreaction central when it comes to the week following that game. Uh, but nonetheless, good to good to chop up some inner outs for uh, for us here when it comes to the SEC. A little bit ahead of SEC Media Days. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.